Hi there! Today, we're embarking on a captivating journey as we step back in time to explore the legendary movies Mission Impossible. I'm sure many of you have fond memories of this classic show. Mission Impossible is a timeless gem that has left an indelible mark on television history. Join us as we relive the magic, revisiting the series with the entire cast, then and now. We'll uncover the original identities and ages of the talented actors from the show and witness how they've transformed in 2023. So, without further ado, let's dive into the world of Mission Impossible together. Number 1. Peter Graves as James Phelps James Phelps, the spy extraordinaire who puts his mission before anything else. He's not just skilled. He's a walking intelligence hub, knowing more about the syndicate than even his former protege, Ethan Hunt. Jim rarely breaks a sweat, even in the most extreme circumstances during a mission. He's the kind of guy who's ready to sacrifice it all, even his life, to save someone he loves. When it comes to protecting friends and family, Jim stops at nothing. Few actors were able to convey a sense of gravitas like the tall, dignified Peter Graves. Brother of actor James Arnis, Graves was readily remembered as one of the hosts on Biography, where he solemnly intoned about the lives of public figures for over a decade. Before his stint on Biography, Graves was a prominent film and television star, hitting his peak in the late 1960s with the stylish Cold War spy drama Mission Impossible. Prior to achieving stardom, the actor faced challenges in establishing his name, featuring in a series of low-budget horror films, some of which found themselves humorously critiqued on the cult series Mystery Science Theater 3000. Although not celebrated for award-worthy performances, Graves left an indelible mark on pop culture, recognized both as an understated comedic actor and a skilled dramatic performer. James Phelps played by Peter Graves when he was 41 years old. Sadly, after returning from brunch on March 14, 2010 with his wife and children, Graves collapsed and died of a heart attack just outside his home, four days before his 84th birthday. Number 2. Barbara Bain as Cinnamon Carter. Say hello to Cinnamon Carter, the master of doing what comes naturally. Her primary gig? Transforming into various characters as the mission demanded, with a knack for distracting male enemies using her sultry looks and seductive charm. When it came to acting, she wasn't just good. She proudly claimed to be the best at lying. Here's the kicker. Her acting skills were so top-notch that, at times, even her IMF teammates questioned whether she'd been compromised. A cool blonde actress with smoky, sultry eyes, Barbara Bain did considerable work on episodic TV during the 1950s and 60s. Her most notable role was portraying Cinnamon Carter, a key member of the Impossible Missions Force, for which she earned three consecutive Emmy Awards for Best Dramatic Actress. The role seemed tailor-made for her, and the recognition was well-deserved. Bain explained the unique origin of her role, stating, Bruce Geller, Mission Impossible's creator, was a writer brought out from New York. Martin wanted writers to see the actor's process. Bruce was quite captivated with watching us, so he wrote the part of Rollin Hand, the man of a thousand roles, for Martin. When he got to the part of The Girl as Cinnamon was then known, he wrote it for me. Although he wasn't clear about that in the beginning, he had to deal with the network and various folks because I was an unknown actress. Cinnamon Carter played by Barbara Bain. When she was 35 years old, and now she is 92 years old. Number three, Greg Morris as Barney Collier. Meet Barney Collier, the epitome of easygoing and chill. Quick to befriend his assignment, comrades, he's the guy who's always on good terms with higher-ups. But here's the catch. His friendly nature often lands him with the short end of the stick, doing the dirty work on missions. Outgoing and friendly, he's the mediator between hot-headed teammates, keeping the peace. Loyalty is his mantra, 
and he values it above all else, even if it means taking Jim's side at the expense of other relationships. After graduating from high school, Greg Morris enlisted in the Army, serving from 1952 to 1955. Following his military service, he pursued a drama education at Ohio State University and the University of Iowa. Eventually, he moved to Seattle to embark on an acting career, initially taking on minor roles on stage. However, these roles caught the attention of Hollywood, leading to guest appearances in a 1963 episode of the comedy series The Dick Van Dyke Show and the iconic sci-fi anthology The Twilight Zone. Morris's significant breakthrough occurred in 1966 when he secured a leading role in the spy series Mission Impossible, portraying electronics expert Barney Collier. Despite various guest roles, Morris did not land another regular television role until the debut of the 1978 cop show Vegas. In 1988, he reprised his role as Barney in the 1980s television remake of Mission Impossible, where his son, Phil Morris, portrayed his character's successor. However, when the 1996 film version of Mission Impossible was released, Morris openly criticized it. Barney Collier played by Greg Morris when he was 33 years old. Sadly, Morris died on August 27, 1996, of lung and brain cancer in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the age of 62. Number 4. Peter Lupus as Willie Armitage when missions needed heavy lifting, Willie was your guy, making even smuggling a fellow agent in a suitcase look like a walk in the park. But Willie wasn't just about brawn. He was a skilled, unarmed combatant, once rendering a grown man unconscious in seconds with a blood choke. Willie wasn't confined to missions requiring brute strength. Whether it was being the go-to driver or showcasing skills in painting, modifying cars, repairing automobiles, operating broadcast equipment, or doing electrician work, Willie was the man for the job actor. Peter Lupus was known for his roles on the silver screen. In the early stages of his acting career, Lupus was featured in films like Modern Day Houdini, with Bill Shirk and Milbourne Christopher and Pulse Beat, with Daniel Green and Lee Taylor Allen. He had a part on the television special Hell's a Poppin', he worked in television in his early acting career as well, including parts on Mission Impossible and Police Squad. His work around this time also included a part on the TV movie Acting on Impulse. He also worked in television during these years, including a part on Spy Game. Lupus most recently appeared on Pioneers of Television. Willie Armitage played by Peter Lupus. When she was 34 years old, and now he is 91 years old. Number 5. Martin Landau as Rollin Hand Rollin Hand, an actor, a magician, and a master of disguises and voices who billed himself as the man of a million faces and the world's greatest impersonator, was a member of the Impossible Missions Force in the 1960s, and he was called upon to help accomplish missions which former U.S. Army Leteed Colonel Dr. Daniel David Briggs, Ph.D., and James Jim Phelps had accepted. In the world of grand-scale confidence games, which method the IMF used most commonly, Rollin was both a grifter and a roper, who first, as a grifter, sought and usually obtained the confidences of the mission targets, and then, as a roper, directed them into the big store settings that undid them. Though he got his start as an actor during the golden age of television in the 1950s, Martin Landau had to wait until the late 1980s until he became a widely recognized commodity. After five years as a cartoonist, Landau switched gears to become an actor, performing in live television productions before graduating to Hollywood features in the 1960s. Toward the latter half of that precarious decade, he landed his first truly memorable role, playing master of disguise Roland Hand on the hit spy series Mission Impossible. Though the show lasted for seven seasons, Landau left after the third because of a contractual dispute, a move that left the actor struggling to find quality roles for almost two decades. Landau had a particularly rough time during the 1980s despite steady work 
mainly as a one-dimensional villain. In projects more concerned with car chases and explosions than character or story, he finally re-emerged with Oscar-nominated roles in Tucker, The Man and His Dream, 1988, and Crimes and Misdemeanors, 1989, eventually winning his first Academy Award for his spot-on portrayal of aging silent film star Bela Lugosi in Ed Wood, 1994 all of which paved the way for higher-profile projects for an actor always capable of quality performances. Rollin Hand, played by Martin Landau. When he was 38 years old, sadly, on July 15, 2017, Landau died at age 89 at the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles. He had been briefly hospitalized. Number 6. Leonard Nimoy as Paris Paris is a skilled combatant who revels in violence and enjoys getting to fight others. She is ruthless when carrying out the missions she is assigned and shows no hesitancy in plowing through whatever obstacles are in her way, as shown by her driving her armored vehicle through numerous cars and other objects in her pursuit of Ethan and Grace during the chase in Rome. With his intelligent demeanor and a subdued yet enigmatic expression, Actor Leonard Nimoy often found himself cast in roles as intense cerebral characters. Nimoy's sharp and incisive manner particularly shown in his most iconic role, the unflappable Vulcan Mr. Spock on the classic sci-fi TV series Star Trek. Beyond television, Nimoy graced Broadway stages in productions like Full Circle and Equus, and toured the country in musicals such as Fiddler on the Roof. He earned acclaim for his one-man show, Vincent, based on the life of painter Vincent van Gogh. Venturing behind the camera, Nimoy directed two of the most popular Star Trek films and the 1987 hit comedy, Three Men and a Baby. In his later years, Nimoy pursued other passions. A skilled poet and photographer, the actor authored several books, including the somewhat controversial The Full Body Project, in 2007, a photographic study featuring large women posing nude. Mostly retired from acting since the early 2000s, Nimoy returned for a cameo as Spock in director J.J. Abrams' highly anticipated Star Trek franchise reboot in 2008, as well as its 2013 sequel. However, he announced via Twitter in February 2014 that he was suffering from a serious lung disease. Paris, played by Leonard Nimoy when he was 35 years old. Sadly, in 2015, Nimoy died at the age of 83 after a long case of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Number 7. Linda Day George as Lisa Casey Linda Day George was a familiar presence on American television in the 1960s and 70s, although she never graduated to true stardom. Born and raised in a small central Texas town, the teenage Linda Day moved to Hollywood and began taking small guest roles in popular TV crime dramas and westerns of the era, including hit shows like Bonanza, The Fugitive, and Mannix, before finally gaining her most prominent role as Lisa Casey opposite Peter Graves in the later seasons of the hit action show Mission Impossible. The George collaborated regularly throughout the 1970s, working on TV movies and a series of European low-budget horror films gaining popularity among the grindhouse crowd, such as Day of the Animals and Mortuary. After Christopher George's death in 1983, Linda Day. George mostly retired from acting, making occasional TV appearances in the following decade, in a surprising turn in 2021, George announced her readiness to return to acting. Lisa Casey played by Linda Day. George when she was 26 years old and now she is 79 years old. Number 8. Stephen Hill as Daniel Briggs. Enter Briggs. The multifaceted character with layers of complexity. At times, he appears cold and calculating not hesitating to resort to lethal means to accomplish a mission. Notably, he stood out as the sole IMF member shown personally killing a non-target, 
revealing a darker side when he ambushed and took down a sentry in The Carriers. At other times, he wears a fatherly hat, displaying encouragement with smiles and shoulder pats as missions unfold. In episodes like Shock, his acting, voice mimicry, and disguise abilities shine, akin to those of his agent, Rollin Hand. A seasoned character actor, Hill initially graced Broadway in the brief run of the Ben Hecht drama A Flag is Born, starring alongside Paul Mooney and Marlon Brando. His film debut occurred in A Lady Without Passport. With a background in live TV drama, notably in productions like The Bridge of San Luis Rey and The Sacco Vanzetti Story, Hill became known for portraying characters of moral authority. His notable roles include playing the father of Jill Clayburg in It's My Turn, Meryl Streep in Heartburn, and Christine Lottie in Running on Empty. Hill delivered a standout performance as Otto Berman, a math wizard and mentor in Billy Bathgate. Additionally, he spent a decade portraying pragmatic DA Adam Schiff on the NBC TV series Law & Order. Cinnamon Carter played by Barbara Bain when she was 35 years old, and now she is 92 years old. Number 9. Leslie Ann Warren as Dana Lambert Dana, the chameleon of the IMF, leveraged her youth as a powerful asset. With a mere bite of her lower lip or a subtle gesture, she effortlessly portrayed vulnerability, making her a master at connecting with both younger and significantly older targets. In Blast she drew in the youth while in Homecoming, set in Phelps' hometown. She captured the attention of men from different generations as the new barmaid at a local tavern. Surprisingly capable despite her youth, Dana showcased her skills in detecting deceptions by enemy agents and assisting more experienced colleagues in their tasks. She didn't shy away from compromising her safety for the mission and maintained composure even in captivity. Despite her tender age, Dana played a myriad of roles, from an international jet-setter to a bag woman, a college activist, a nurse, and even an up-and-coming singer in a band. Dana, the youthful virtuoso of espionage roles. A greatly underutilized talent in features, this stage-trained actress has shown in numerous TV movies, miniseries, and music-oriented specials. Her introduction to America was as a radiant Cinderella, in the now-classic Rodgers and Hammerstein musical TV special. Transitioning to features, Warren made her debut in The Happiest Millionaire, a Disney musical starring Fred McMurray, followed by another Disney production, the one and only genuine original family band, where she played the love interest of John Davidson. Despite limited opportunities in feature films, Warren's potential as a lead was fully realized on the small screen. She became a familiar face in numerous TV movies, pilots, miniseries, and guest appearances. TV recognized and capitalized on Warren's talent, showcasing her in roles that highlighted her capabilities as a lead actress. Dana Lambert, played by Leslie Ann. When she was 24 years old, and now she is 77 years old. Number 10. Sam Elliott as Doug Robert Doug. The maverick with unmatched confidence in his skills and unwavering professional ethics. His standout moment? Winning an argument with the formidable Jim Phelps, Peter Graves, himself. In the episode The Rebel, Jim, sporting a severe bullet wound in one arm, tried to downplay the injury. Doug, however, stood firm, refusing to let it go untreated earning a rare glare from Jim as he reluctantly allowed Doug to work his medical magic. Sam Elliott, with his rugged good looks and resonant voice, transitioned from the quintessential cowboy roles to embodying thoughtful, sage characters over his extensive career. Born in Sacramento, California, he spent much of his youth in Portland, Oregon. After leaving college, he ventured to Los Angeles to pursue an acting career. His journey included roles in TV shows like The Felony Squad and The FBI, along with a minor part in the Paul Newman-Robert Redford classic Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, 1969. 
Elliot secured a recurring role on the popular series Mission Impossible, CBS, 1966-73, marking the beginning of a sustained period of consistent work. Throughout the 70s, he made regular guest appearances on various police dramas, including Hawaii Five-O, CBS, 1968-80, and The Streets of San Francisco. Doug Robert, played by Sam Elliott. When he was 26 years old, and now he is 79 years old, we reflect on the incredible journey of the mission. Impossible cast from 1966 to 1973, witnessing their growth and transformations, it's evident that the bond forged during those years has left an enduring legacy. From thrilling highway pursuits to heartwarming moments, these actors brought the California Highway Patrol to life. Their stories continue to resonate with fans around the world. As we explore their then and now, we celebrate the enduring impact of the mission, impossible. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic trip down the California highways with the remarkable The Mission, impossible cast of yesteryear.